Welcome back to the ChatGPT for beginners course. Let's talk about basic prompting. So, basic prompting. Did you mind what is a prompt? A prompt is the thing you enter into ChatGPT in order to get an output. So, let's say we are here in ChatGPT, opening a conversation, and the prompt is what you type again here or because at three years well it was racial talk chat secret with class it's just quick here okay here goes your prompt just hit the enter button or click here and you will get an output all right we talk about prompting we also need to talk about prompt engineering prompt engineer is a term you might have heard about and prompt engineering for the sake of this course is the art and science of writing a prompt to get the exact output you desire basically the quality of your prompt is the best predictor of the quality of your output so if you want better outputs write better prompts there's a number of rules for prompts, but to keep it simple, what you really need, so you should write a clear prompt. Don't make it confusing. Don't make it long on the necessary. Be specific. Unless you're just looking for general brainstorming and want ChatGPT to give you broad ideas. Be very specific about what you want. And also always offer some context. ChatGPT is powerful, but just like another human being, it cannot read your mind. So it doesn't know exactly the situation you're in or exactly the context for the ideas or the output that you're looking for. In simple words, the better you can describe what you want, more likely it is that you're going to get it. It's just like in life. All right, some very simple prompts. Okay, what's gonna prompt be? A prompt can, for example, be a question. Sometimes you just want to have some information. So let me go here and mark this, like, what are the potential impacts of artificial intelligence on future job market? That's an open-ended question. Ask it the question and you will get the long detailed output that can almost be used for an essay in this case. Maybe you want to solve a problem. The problem can be a math problem, but it can also be any other problems, like if you have a problem at work or a problem uh, in a relationship. Um, or, yeah, a problem in your household about uh, investment that you have to make. You can just describe the problem and hit the enter button and you will get some ideas by the AI. Another simple problem, maybe you just want it to, be to, to give you a text draft, right? Maybe you need an email that you're going to send. Maybe you need some headline suggestions for an email you're going to send or an article you're going to write. So those are all things that you can write as a prompt. Um, we can also talk about three different types of prompts. These are also aligned, by the way, with uh, the free bonus you get with the book, which is the 500 best prompts for JetGPT, Dolly 3, and Journey. Um, there's role-specific prompts. Role-specific prompts basically assign JetGPT a role and help it to focus its knowledge, give it context. And generally, it's just a great technique to help you get better outputs from JetGPT. Um, we'll look at examples of all of these in the next slides. Then you can have long and detailed prompts. So again, if you want something very specific, make a very specific prompt where you describe exactly what it is that you want, give details, and it's more likely that you're going to get them. Then experimentation prompts, those are prompts that I've given you also in a free PDF. So you can just play around with these to see how changing a part of your prompt will give you often a very different output. So let's look at examples of each of these prompts. You can always start your prompt by assigning ChatGPT a specific role, like it says here. As a career counselor, how would you guide someone in identifying their core strengths and aligning them with potential career paths? This is role specific. Chechik team knows exactly how it should act or from what perspective it should give you an output. 
along with detailed prompt here, just so means that will create a detailed plan to help an individual identify and set clear career goals, including thought process and exercises in your research. So here, again, first you tell it that you want a very detailed plan, and you also give it a number of items or number of sections that you want in the output. Okay, you give it a very clear guidance and as that you basically determine the structure of the output that you want to get. All right. If you know that you want something specific, the better you can tell ChatGPT what you want, the better it will be giving you that output. There we have experimentation prompts, experimentation prompts like what are effective ways to identify personal passions and interests that can translate into career opportunities. So we're still on the topic of uh, career planning, but you can basically use this as a formula also. Like what are effective ways to write blog articles about artificial intelligence that I could use on my blog. Another important aspect of prompting is skill-specific prompting with ChatGPT. So you see, if you have ChatGPT+, Plus, like we talked about earlier, you get all of these amazing additional features, right? And what I call skill-specific prompting is JetGPT automatically detects the kind of future you want it to use, right? But you should tell JetGPT exactly if you want it to use one of its functions. So if you want to use web browsing, say in your prompt that it should use online browsing to find, or you can say, please find me five sources from the live web that underlying this information. Right. If you use something like this, Tejib, you will know exactly that you want it to use to life web browsing function. Image generation. If you want to use Dolly 3 to generate images or illustrations, tell it exactly just that. Create an image, give me a design, create an illustration, create a business logo, and so on. These words will tell you to ChatGPT to create an image or illustration. Um, also, image analysis. So, by the way, if you go here, an image analysis, you would go here, click here, then upload an image, and then you type the prompt and tell it basically what ChatGPT should do with the image, which will probably include analyzing that image. And then finally, if you go on YouTube, a lot of YouTubers will talk about the perfect prompt structure. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this because ideally you should always go by what you really need, right? So whether if you want a book outline, your prompt will be very different than if you need a solution to a maths problem or you want to create a travel plan for your next holiday. But it does help to think of a prompt to contain certain elements. And that's where the idea of a prompt structure comes in handy. So important elements that most prompts will include are a task where you just talk about what exactly JetGPT should do, right? Should it write text? Should it create an image? Uh, should it create an outline? Should it reason? Um, there's all kinds of tasks you can give it. The context kind of describes, um, basically, you just give background information why you need this output and in what context you need this output. Um, at persona is kind of the idea of assigning the role. So you kind of tell ChatGPT what persona it will take on to create this output, which also helps it to get additional context. Then format, that's kind of the deliverable. You could also say that you're looking for, right? So if you're looking for a blog post, for a report, for a travel plan, for a, uh, a cooking recipe, that it would go here. And the tone is basically you can tell ChatGPT to write in any specific tone that you're looking for. So this could be like here, informative and friendly. It could be professional and formal. It could be casual. It could be funny and witty. You name it. 
right? So the thing is also, if you don't define these things, ChatGPT will go with something generic, which could be what you want, but also may not be. Um, and of course, you can also always uh, edit an existing output for a different tone or for a different format or for a different persona. So you can also do this once you have gotten an author on ChatGPT. Here, I won't read them, but you just have an example or you have two examples of prompts that use this structure. All right. Those are the basics of prompts. Now, my general recommendation is see prompting as an iterative process so you don't have to write a perfect prompt. But a prompt, just write, it's a chatbot. So basically, it's like you can have the conversation with ChatGPT and in the course of the conversation and based on the output you get, you can always refine your prompts. And again, it's an iterative process. So just keep working with ChatGPT until you get the output that you want. But of course, the more time you spend prompting and the more time you spend experimenting with ChatGPT, the better you will get at prompting, the better you will realize maybe information that you should include, uh, maybe things you should tell ChatGPT not to do. So just keep it up in mind, be playful. And it's a bit like learning a new language in the sense that you're interacting with a new partner and yeah, over time, your communication will improve. And if you get an output that is really not what you want, then just see as a learning experience and don't think that ChatGPT doesn't work. Again, you just have to refine your communication skills with this AI.